10:22 so shall we start طيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم welcome to e21 so today's lecture will be the 20th and in today's lecture we're going to um, continue talking about what we did last time what we talked about last time and uh, probably hopefully we'll conclude chapter 7 So let's uh, let's start by um, reviewing what we did. So remember, in, in this chapter, the, the the whole picture is to study the transient behavior of RC or R circuits. So when we started, we divided the problem into two two parts or uh, two two, two sub problems. One is the natural response, the other one is the step response. But turns out this distinction is kind of like. Uh, Kind of like simplification of the the whole analysis, but uh, overall there is a general differential equation that differential equation that we need to solve, and this is the differential equation. And the solution for this one is of the following form: the final value of the uh, of the quantity here plus the initial value minus the final value. Uh, scaled by the uh, scaled by uh, the decaying exponential factor here. Again, uh, here t should be this this term is valid for t greater than t naught dagger, and t naught dagger is equal to uh, t naught uh, or t naught plus or anything except anything that can change uh, instantaneously. So anything except the inductor current or the capacitor voltage. Uh, t naught uh, dagger equals to t, t naught plus. Otherwise, uh, t naught dagger equals to uh, simply t naught. So that's that's basically what we did. So we have a standard form, and all what we need to do is to fill in the uh, uh, fill in the the missing terms here, or fill in the coefficients, if we can say, if we can. Uh, Yeah, if we can write them as uh, if we can express them as coefficients. So if you recall from last time, uh, we have one uh, one exercise left uh, in this section uh, for uh, 7.4, and let's try to to uh, to tackle this problem. So what we have here is something uh, very interesting. We have a combination of inductors, and uh, we have a switch that moves between position A and B. So um, the uh, the switch was originally at position A for a long time. At t equals to zero, the switch moves to to uh, instantaneously to position B. So what we are asked to to find first is to uh, to find V naught here. Then we are asked to find I1 and I2. So let's just start with finding V naught. Okay. Uh, again, here we can see that V naught is the voltage across the 120 ohm uh, resistor, and this voltage is actually when the switch moves to position B, it's equal to the voltage across the uh, the the parallel combination of the uh, of the uh, of the inductor. So we may need to actually uh, divide this problem. Into two two sub problems, and let's start with what happens. Oh, first of all, let's recall that the voltage across the inductor is simply the derivative of the uh, of the current multiplied by the inductance. So let's find the current passing through the parallel combination of these inductors. So the current. So we combine these two inductors in parallel, and the voltage V naught is equal to the voltage. Uh, is equal to the voltage across the parallel combination of these two inductors. So let's draw first. Let's draw the circuit for t less than zero. So the switch at the position A, we have. Let me give enough, uh, enough space. L1, which is 60, 
Millie Henry. L2 is 40 Millie Henry. We have I1, I2. So, uh, so the switch been at position A for a long time. So the uh, inductors behave like a short circuit. So meaning that there is no current passing through the 15 ohm. So in order to find the current passing through the 60 ohm resistor, uh, 60, 60 millihenry, uh, 60 millihenry inductor, we apply the current divider law here. So it's going to be 40 divided by 40 plus 60 multiplied by 25, the total, and this is going to give us 10 milli uh, amperes. I2, the current passing through the other inductor, the 40 milli uh, inductor, is going to be 60, 40 plus 60. And this is going to give me 15. So this is this is going to be the initial current in inductor one uh, and the initial current in inductor two. So the initial current in the parallel combination, if you recall when we when we when we discussed the parallel combination of inductors and capacitors, we said that the initial current is going to be the summation of the individual ones. So it's going to be I1 plus I2, which is 25. The end. So this is the initial current for the, the inductor combination. So now, from this analysis, we have everything we need from the uh, for the time of the switch at position A. Now let's see what happens with the switch at position B. The switch moves to position B. So the 15 and 25 milli uh, ampere source, they are out of the picture now. We have a parallel combination of inductors, a 120 ohm and a 50 uh, milli ohm, uh, milli, ampere, uh, milli ampere source. So I will, what I will do here is actually I will combine the inductors because they are in parallel. So I can combine them. The equivalent inductance will be 24 milli Henry. If I call this one IL, according to the basis of convention, this one should be V naught or VL in this case. So let's see, uh, what's the final value of the current passing for the indexer? Nobody, nobody wants to, to participate. Brahim? Uh, 15 milli ampere. Uh, partially correct. You missed one, one important factor. Uh, negative. Negative 50. Okay, so we know the, the initial current. We know the final current. What's left here is the time constant. So remember, uh, this is an RL circuit. So the time constant is going to be uh, L divided by R. And L is 24 milli Henry divided by R, which is 120 ohm. And this is going to give me 0.2 milliseconds. So let me just put my headphones. Okay, now I have the time constant, I have the initial value, I have the final value, so I can easily express the or find, find the expression of the current. And in this case, the expression of the current is simply like this. I final.
or if I simplify it, it will be minus 50 plus 75. Okay, so this is the current person before the inductor. In order to find the voltage, we need to differentiate the, induct, uh, the, the current and scale it by the inductance. So this is VL of T should be equals to V output of T or V naught of T, and it should be DI by DT. And if we do the calculation, we'll end up with minus nine. Okay. <clears throat> so that's that's what we have. So now we found V naught uh, and I uh, V naught and I naught. Uh, v I'm sorry, we found V naught. So the second part is asking us to find I one and I two. We kind of like. We kind of devised a method of finding I1 and I2 here. What can we do? What do you think, Shalom? So let me draw the circuit for you. So I'll bring 60 back. I'll bring, uh, was it 40? Yes. Twenty. Uh, this one. Okay, uh, Ibrahim. Um, not Ibrahim, uh, Yasser. Yes, uh, we already calculated I1 and I2 initial. We can use, I guess, current divider again to find I, I1 final and I2 final. Ah, you, can, you can do that, but there is, uh, there is, a, there is another way of, like, a uh, very simple way of, of doing this. The, the thing is, like, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, you, you, you can do that. It's it's not something that's that complicated, but it seems that there is, there is an easier approach here. Abraham? Uh, maybe we can use, uh, since we, 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 are, we now know the voltage, we can integrate. Yes, exactly. So we know the voltage. They have they have the they have the same voltage as their barometer combination. Uh, the the issue here, uh, uh, yes, it is is that you need actually to also account for the 120 ohm resistor. So in the previous case, the 120 ohm resistor is actually in parallel with the short circuit. So we kind of like ignore it. So here you'll have a combination of uh, inductors and uh, combination of inductors and also uh, a combination of inductors and uh, resistor. So it's not it's not straightforward to 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 apply the current divider. So that's why uh, this approach is is much simpler. Okay, this is the integral of the voltage. This is the initial value, which is 10 milliampere. So if we uh, run the integral, we want to we are going to end up with 30 e to the power. 5000T minus 20 milliampere, and this is 
ظروف تيجا شرطه يعني اوري كوس زين عبد الله اليوسف دكتور واي وي دينت يوز ذا 15 ولا 15 يس اعطيني شيء ااا نو ذا نيشا كاركتر از 10 ذا نيشا كاركتر 14 less than 0 which is this one So the initial class in the pro I1 or the inductor one is actually we calculate it to be 10. Okay, thank you. So for I2, we're going to do exactly the same. The only difference here is we are going to divide by L2 and we're going to add instead of 10, we're going to add 15. And this is going to give me. And this is going to give me. Uh, and this is going to give me the value of the current. Okay. I two. So if we solve for it, we'll end up with uh, 45. Uh, not that one thing here, uh, this is I2. Uh, not that one thing here. If you can actually, you can actually find I1 and I2 using the standard way, meaning that I1 of T would be I final plus I initial minus I final equal uh, multiplied by the time constant. So it's, it's going to be exactly the same time constant. So I final here is by looking into uh, this equation it's going to be uh, 40 divided by 60 multiplied by uh, by 50 so it's going to be minus 20 i initial will be the one we calculated which was 10 so if you uh, if you substitute you will see that i final minus i initial it's going to be uh, 10 minus, I'm sorry, minus 20. Okay, minus 20, yes. Uh, what is I initial? I initial is 10, 10 minus, minus 20, which is 30. And this is exactly what we have in here. Uh, you can do the same for I2. You will have I final will be uh, negative 30. I initial will be 30, it uh, will be 15. And if you substitute, you will end up with uh, uh, minus 30, which is the final value, uh, 10, 15 minus minus 30, which is 45. So there are two ways actually of doing this. Uh, you can either integrate, or you can either, either substitute. Okay, uh, any questions about that? Rahim, final voltage divider, Actually, you can easily, you can easily see, uh, you can easily get the final value of the current 
uh, from the initial values here. Because you see here, the source is, the original source was 25. This one is 50, so two multiplied by uh, 25, which is, so you double the current. So you expect I1 will be doubled, you expect I2 to be doubled. Uh, the, the only difference is the sign here, uh, because I1 is, is from is going up. I'm sorry, the 25 uh, milliampere is going up, the 50 is going down. So you can easily, you didn't need to do the calculation here, just by noticing that. In the first case, you have 25. In the second case, you have 50. So doubling, double the value, and the polarity should be should be different. Okay. Uh, yes, Doctor, uh, Doctor, the question first, when we did the current divider, why did we not use the resistor? Because it's it's been it's been there for a long time. The switch has been at position one for a long time, so these will behave like a short circuit. Uh, so that's but, that's it. Okay, got it. Thank you. So this is will conclude the uh, this section, and in this section we kind of like we did not we did not do anything new. All what we did was restating what we what we previous uh, three sections. So we kind of like said, well, there is there is a standard way of writing this problem. There is a standard way of solving this problem. Just give me the final value, the initial value, and the time constant, and we'll give you the expression for any quantity that uh, that we have, provided that we have uh, RL or RC set, or provided that, that the overall quantity or overall, or overall quantity obeys uh, this uh, differential equation. Now, uh, there is one important thing here we did not, we did not consider, a uh, non-zero t naught. So in the following section, what we are going to do, we're going to actually uh, bring this uh, T naught, non-zero T naught into, uh, uh, bring it into the equation and try to investigate what's going on. So uh, in the original case, in the, or in the previous case, we assume that the switching uh, occurs at T equals to zero. This makes sense if you have one, one occurrence. Uh, one, you, the switch is, is, occur, uh, is occurring like one time. If you have multiple switching or uh, sequential switching, then you need to assign a reference point, which is the first switching time, and then another uh, and another uh, another switching time that you need to consider, uh, or uh, you need to assign another time instant for uh, the, the following or the second uh, switching time. This is called the sequential switching. So think about it this way. So at t equals to zero, let's consider the circuit. The switch moves from position A to position B. Now it stays at position B until uh, 15 milliseconds. Then it moves to position C. So we have uh, or we we have something called sequential switching. So we switch more than more than once. Oh, yeah. uh, let's uh, let's see what we have. Uh, let's explain with the exercise. So here we have uncharged capacitor. So when you when you when you hear the word or when you read the word uncharged capacitor, it means that the initial value is zero. So the capacitor has no accumulated charge, uh, charges on its plates. So meaning that the voltage across the capacitor is, is zero because the voltage across any capacitor is something like this. Q divided by C, if there is no charge, then the voltage is zero. So initially switched to terminal A. So the capacitor was initially at term A uh, of a three position switch. At T equals to zero, the switch moved to position B, like we said. Then it remains there for 15 milliseconds. 
After 15 milliseconds delay, or 15 milliseconds later, the switch moved to position C, where it's remained indefinitely. So what we want to do, we want to find the numerical expression for the voltage across the capacitor. When you say like numerical expression, we're concerned about the values. So just don't just give me the V final or the, the symbols, just give me the values, the coefficients. So what's, what do you think the standard way or what do you think the best way to approach this problem? Ziad. Divide it into two parts. Divide it into actually three parts, not two. Okay. We have the first part for t less than zero. The second part from t equals to zero to t equals to 15 in a second. The third part is from t, uh, when t greater than 15 in a second. So let's dissect uh, this, this problem. Okay. So let's start with t equals to zero. We see that, uh, we know that the, the initial voltage is, is zero because we are told that the capacitor is uncharged. So let's see what we have. Uh, first of all, we don't need to do any analysis here because the voltage across the capacitor is zero. It's not connected to any circuit. Then let's consider the case from So again, do not spend so much time imagining the circuit, just to draw it. So if we draw the circuit, we will get something like this. I believe this one is 100K. Yes. Okay. Okay, now we know that after 15 milliseconds, the capacitor will uh, will switch to position C. So in order to solve this problem, you need to assume for the time moment that the capacitor switched to position A, uh, to position B, and it stays there forever. So you kind of like ignore what happens afterwards. So just solve the problem as if the switch moves to position uh, B and it stays there indefinitely. Can we do that? Can, can, is it doable, Shabab? Yes. Yeah, yeah, there's nothing. So nothing new. So the initial value is zero. The final value is actually the value of the faulty source, which is 400 volts. The time constant is R multiplied by C, which is uh, 10 milliseconds. So now I, ha I have everything I need. I can uh, write the formula here. Note, here is uh, where the fact that uh, the, the capacitor stays at position B uh, from T equals to zero to T equals to 15 milliseconds. Uh, here is where this fact appears. So this is true only in this interval. So that's the only thing that you need to add. Nothing, nothing else. That's all. So now let's actually consider the last interval, t greater than 15 milliseconds. Again, I'm not, I'm not going to solve it. Uh, I'm not going to, to attempt to solve it first. I'm going to draw it first, and this will give me an indication on. Uh, uh, this gives me like a better visualization on uh, of the circuits. Okay, who can 
uh, help me finding the initial value here. Mohanad? Can I substitute uh, 15 millisecond in the final value of circuit on the second position? Uh, exactly. So what we need to do, uh, excellent. This is exactly what we need to do. So we need to take the previous expression, substitute t equals to 15 milliseconds. And this is going to give me the initial value. So 400, 1 minus e to the power 400 And it happens to be 310.75 volts. So this is the initial value. Now I need the final value. Since there is no source, so the final value is zero. The time constant is R multiplied by C. C is 0.1 micron, R is 50. So this is going to give me uh, five milliseconds. So now I have everything I need to, to write the expression for the voltage across the capacitor for T greater than uh, 15. Notice one thing here. Here I need to write it T minus. No space here. T minus fifteen milliseconds. Or T greater than fifteen milliseconds. Is it clear, Shabab? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, now I found the, the value of the capacitor uh, on drive the expression. So it turns out uh, there are three expressions. So the first one is zero, the second one is is this one, the third one is that one. Hadi? Doctor, in the first interval, uh, should be just uh, T less than 15 milliseconds without uh, equal? Uh, it, the, uh, here's the thing. So, what do we know about the voltage across the capacitor? Uh, what do you mean? There's a fact about the voltage across the capacitor. What uh, d uh, doesn't uh, change? It's instantaneous, instantaneously. So, the voltage, whether we use uh, less than or equal or Less than it should be exactly the same. Okay, I got so it. It doesn't matter. Omar? Uh, so, Doctor, if it's keep charging forever, it's going to be uh, the same as the voltage of the battery, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay. Uh... So we want to plot the voltage across the capacitor versus time. Uh, so let's attempt to plot this voltage. So you see that it will start charging was zero, and it will start charging and it will discharge. This one is 15 milliseconds. And this one is T. 
this one is V select. Della Leggeri. Uh, I want to participate, the second one. What's that? I just wanted to participate. Oh, okay. So, uh, how did I? Uh, had the question or not? Okay, the law. Okay. Uh, so, since you raise your hand, so let's see. Uh, when will the voltage on the capacitor equal to 200 volts? How to find it, Abdullah? Oh, we take the first equation and uh, equal it to 200. And then we find T. Uh, okay, this is partially correct. Uh, why is that? Because I remember here, if this is 200, uh, if this is 200, then it will reach 200 in the first, uh, in the second interval from 0 to 50, and it also is going to reach 200 uh, in, the, in, the, in the third interval from uh, when it's greater than 50. So we need actually to do two things. Or we need to uh, solve it. Uh, actually, there are two two time instants, or two, two time instants when the voltage equals to 200 volts. So the first one is can be found using uh, the first one can be found using the, f uh, the second uh, equation or the, the the voltage in the second interval, which is this one. So we need two hundred equals to four hundred one minus e minus hundred t. So if we solve for it, we'll end up with T1 equals to 6.9 V milliseconds. Okay, that's what you said. The second one is we take this formula and try to find the time when the voltage reaches uh, 200. And in this case, we have 200. equals to a region and if we do that we will get seventeen point two milliseconds. Okay, is it clear Shabab? Huh? That is well, well. excellent. Mm. Okay, see, so you have one more exercise on this subject. We'll start to solve it. So, this is uh, another, another way of asking questions about sequential uh, switching. So, on this circuit, we have Remember the previous one we had a case for a capacitor, this one is for inductor. And in this case, we have two switches. So the original part, the original circuit was completely, was fully connected. Then at t equals to zero, switch one is, is open. And 35 milliseconds later, switch two is, is open. So what we need to do, we need to find IL from uh, 0 to 35 milliseconds. Basically, 1 and 2 is asking you to find IL of T. So this one is asking you to find IL of T from 0 to 35 milliseconds. Also, you need to include the fact what happens before for T less than 0. And the other one is asking you uh, IL for T greater than, uh, this one should be T. For T greater than uh, 35 milliseconds. So let's start with the first one. I need someone to assist me with this. Someone new, please.
Okay. The all suspects. Oh. Allah يعطيكم العافية. I'm really happy with with your uh, performance. Uh, طيب ياسر. Yes. So at the beginning we should draw the full circuit because both switches are closed. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me let, let me let me do it. Okay. Hold this. So the switch was closed. Uh, six. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, so uh, after that, we know that. For a very long time, uh, L will behave like a short circuit, and ATM resistor will get cancelled. Exactly. And then so, we can let the current in the L with any with using mesh or maybe source transformation or any with. Yes, you can do that. I let's let's find the voltage across the uh, the three ohm resistor, and I know for sure that I L is going to be divided by three because l will be short circuit so i uh, i mean i need to find the current passing through it uh, it's going to be uh, the 18 and l uh, would be a combined in parallel so the parallel combination will be again a short circuit so the voltage across the three ohm resistor is going to be my voltage divider law. It's 18 volt. So I L the initial value of the current is 18 divided by 3, which is 6 and this. Okay, the green. Let's, uh, okay, let's see what happened. Okay. So this is a circuit. What happens here? Uh, at the 35 milliseconds, uh, it's, uh, the no, 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 from zero to 35 milliseconds. Uh, from zero to 30. The switch number one will open, but switch number two will be closed. Okay, so the circuit will be something like this. Okay, this is this is the circuit we have. Okay. So in order to find the current here, uh, what should we do? First of all, what's the final value of the current? Uh, how we find the first value of the current? What's what's the va what's the final value of the current? Uh, I need to do a current divider to find. Not really. Because remember, there is no source. So the value of the current will be zero. It should be zero, yeah. The initial value we found it to be six. Now we need to find the time constant. Uh, the time constant is L divided by R. Brahim, uh, what's the. I mean, we know L, the value of L is. Uh, 150 million Henry, what, what's the value of R? Brian? It is 
3 plus 6 with parallel uh, with the 18. Exactly. It's the Thevenin resistance seen by the uh, by the inductor. So it's going to be 3 plus 6 in parallel with 80. And this is going to give you um, six uh, ohms. So now I have everything I need to calculate the time constant. So it's going to be 150, 25 milliseconds. So now I can find the solution for the current. I L of T. The initial value, which is uh, the final value, which is zero, plus the initial value minus the final value, e to the power minus 40t. And this is a true from there. This is true from zero to t. I'll simplify it, it will be something like this. Okay, uh, so now, now this answers part one. Uh, part two, Salman. Victor, I have a question. Yes, go uh, ahead. Why the current at infinity is zero? Because there is no source, so that the, the energy will be completely dissipated in these sources, in these uh, resistors. Wait. Um, uh, Ziad? Uh, yes, we find the uh, initial current at uh, 35 millisecond. Yes. And then the final current will be zero because there is no source, as you said. Okay. So let's draw the circuit again. So it's, it's really very constructive to draw the circuit. So I have. Now the AT is out of the picture. So I final I final will be zero. I initial will be and this is going to be uh Move to the next page. So I initial will be will be one point four eight and there are okay now I have the initial value, I have the final value. Mohanet? Ah yeah, we, we still need to find the, the equation. We just find the time constant by uh, <coughs> L over R, and R equivalent will be here 9. Yes, which is the summation of the two resistors. 3 and 6. Uh, here. So this is going to give me, uh, what is the value here? Uh, 16.67 milliseconds. So I will now substitute the value T minus 35 milli, and there this is to 40 greater than 35 milliseconds. OK, so we solved part one, part two. Now, we've been asked to find the percentage of the initial energy stored in the 15 millihenry inductor that's dissipated in the 18 ohm resistor. So just 
looking into this equation or this this problem statement, it tells us to do two things. It tells us to uh, first of all, it asks us to find the percentage. So in order to find the percentage, you need to find the initial energy stored in the 15 millihenry inductor, and you need to find the energy in the 18 ohm resistor. So let's see. The, what's the initial energy store in the uh, 150 millihenry index? Or how to find it? Ziad? We integrate the power from 0 to 35. Uh, not really. Yes, sir. We, uh, we differentiate the the current and then scale it by L to find the voltage so what's, and then okay. we integrate. So, so, okay, okay. So what's what's the energy of the inductor? What's the energy stored in the inductor? There is a shortcut here. Half L I squared. One yes. over two C uh, L squared. Uh, L I squared. Yes. Ah, half sorry, L, L, I yeah. squared. Okay. L uh, yeah, basically. So Okay, well, what is I in this case? We're talking about the initial energy stored in the inductor. So what is I? By him? It's zero. Is this is the initial energy? I is actually the initial current. This is the initial energy stored in the inductor. So what happens here? What happens in this circuit? You connect, you connect the voltage source, and during this connection, you are kind of like uh, store of you are actually storing energy into the inductor. Then you disconnect the source. When you disconnect the source, now it's time for the inductor to actually dissipate that energy. So the inductor does not dissipate energy while you are connecting the source. It's accumulating energy. So what is I in this case? It's simply I. Uh, it's simply I initial. So this is the initial energy of the inductor. L I initial. And if you substitute, you get 2700 millijoule. So this is the initial energy stored in the inductor. Now, what do we need to, to do is we are asked to find the percentage of the energy, initial energy stored in the 150 uh, millihenry inductor that is dissipating in the 18 hour system. So basically what we are asked to do is now to find the, the energy dissipated in the 18 ohm resistor. So at at what what interval in time? At what at, uh, at what interval in time this 18 ohm resistor is is actually good or was used? Rahim? Uh, between zero and uh, 35 milliseconds. Yes, exactly. After T, uh, when T greater than 35 milliseconds, uh, the switch is, is open, so uh, 18, uh, 18 ohm resistor is being disconnected. Okay. So in order to find the energy, you need to find the power. So in order to find the power, you need to find the current or the voltage associated uh, with the resistance. So it's much easier to find the, the, the voltage because you know that the 18 ohm resistor is actually in parallel with the uh, with the uh, with the inductor. So you know the current of the inductor. You can easily find the voltage. So V 18 ohm is simply equals to V L, which is L. DIL 
by dt. And this is going to give you minus 36 Now that's why we did not we did not use uh, we assume it's it's greater than t not greater than greater than zero not greater than or equal to zero because the voltage will change instantaneously choose to be zero. Okay, so the power is going to be v squared divided by r. So this is seventy two minus eighty t. So if I want to find the energy, I need to integrate from 0 to 35 milliseconds of 72 minus 80 T and DT, and this is going to give me 854.27 millijoule. So now I found the energy of the 18 ohm resistor. I found the initial stored energy. So what I can do is actually uh, take the percentage. So 854.27 divided by 2700 multiplied by 100. And this is going to give me 31. So 31% of the initial energy stored in the inductor is being dissipated by dissipated in the uh, 18 ohm resistor. Okay, Mohammed, question? Yes, doctor. Why did we ignore uh, the energy of the 18 ohm resistor when T is less than zero? Uh, because uh, for for too many reasons, the uh, the first one is actually the, the inductor is, is not is not releasing energy. That's one thing. The other thing is actually the current passing through the 18 ohm resistor is actually zero because it's a part of the short circuit. So there is no energy to begin okay. with. Uh, yes, doctor. Could you back to the solution? Back to the next page, please. Uh, Yes, I did not understand how we got uh, how we said like the initial uh, like the initial current was six ohm. Why did not be put a zero? And in, in the energy equal half. The initial current was six ohm. Yes. Yes. This is I at t equals to zero negative. Uh, oh, this minus. So, sorry, I did not see it. Thank you. Very good. Okay. Uh, Ahmed. Yes. Uh, sorry, again, again, why? What, what's the reason? Which reason? Uh, of uh, 6 uh, ampere. This is the initial current. Yeah. Uh, yes, this yes. is the initial current passing for the inductor. Thanks. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, the last part is asking us to repeat. Three for uh, three and six ohm. So uh, I will show you how to do it for three, and I'll give you the solution for uh, for uh, for six ohm. So for three ohm, in this case, the initial stored energy is exactly the same, but the, the difference here is that you need to consider the three ohm resistor in two cases. You need to consider it from or on two intervals from t equals to 0 uh, to t equals to 35, and when t is greater than 35, because the, ther the 3 ohm resistor is part of the circuit uh, in both intervals. So let's start. So you need to find the voltage here. So if you find the voltage, you know that the, the uh, you know the voltage across the inductor is going to be 
Uh, where is it? Okay. You know the voltage across the inductor is actually 30, uh, negative 36. That you calculated from the previous part. When you try to find the voltage across the 18 ohm resistor. So you can apply voltage divider law to, to find the voltage across the 3 ohm resistor. So now you know the voltage, you can find the, uh, the power. If you do that, you will end up with 48. Now we need to integrate it to find the energy. And if you do that, you will get 563.51. So this is for the first interval. For the second interval, uh, you need to uh, use, you need to find, uh, well, for the second interval, it might be easier to actually use the current because uh, you know that the, the, the inductor is in series with the three ohm resistor. So using the current in that interval will uh, will give you the power. So So if you integrate the power from 35 milliseconds to infinity, you will get 0. So now the total power dissipated, uh, or the total energy dissipated in the 35, uh, in, uh, in the three ohm resistor is going to be the summation of, of the energy dissipated In the first interval, plus the energy distributed in the second interval. So, if you calculate the percentage, you're going to get 61824 divided by 2700 multiplied by 100 and this is going to give you uh, I believe 22.9% for the 6 ohm resistor if you do the calculation you will end up with 50 uh, I'm sorry 45 percent now if you sum if you add the energy dissipated in the uh, in the six ohm resistor plus the energy dissipated in the three ohm resistor plus the energy dissipated in the uh, 18 ohm resistor, uh, uh, you should get uh, you should get 100 percent, which means that. The total energy uh, stored in the the initial energy stored in the inductor uh, is completely dissipated in these three resistors. So, any question? Is it?
doesn't the source when we consider from 0 to 35 milliseconds contribute to the power dissipated in the resistors? No, the source has been disconnected. Oh, OK, it's disconnected at 0. OK, the last part about uh, the last part in chapter four, chapter seven is concerned about so remember the whole analysis that we did, we did not consider starting from chapter seven. We did not consider any circuit with the dependent voltage source. So let's see what happens if we have a dependent voltage source. This is something called unbounded response. So if you recall, always all, all what we have, the everything we have is kind of like have is having a decaying nature. So the voltage or the current will be uh, will will reach a certain value and then decay to zero, or it will stay constant at 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 uh, or, or will stay at a constant value. The the only the only concern here is can we have a voltage or current response that keep increasing? If you think about it from a physical perspective, physical system, this cannot, I mean, this is cannot be sustained. So let's see uh, under which occasion uh, this kind of behavior is, is actually, is actually achieved. Uh, so it seems that if we have a dependent source, then the response will not of a decay nature. It will be of increasing, of, of a growing nature. So the exponent term will have, we always have something like this, e to the power minus a t. In this case, we'll have e to the power a of t. So meaning that the response, the voltage or the count is, is continuously increasing. Uh, in, in this case, we cannot use the, the general uh, response or the general way of solving this problem, but we need to, to use, uh, we need to derive a differential equation each time. So let's explain this with, with an exercise. In reality, if you have a system like this, uh, it's not going to be sustained, so it's going to break. And uh, let's, uh, let's see this with this exercise. It says that when we have we have switch, the switch is closed. When the switch is closed in the circuit shown below, the voltage in the capacitor is 10 volts. Find the expression for V naught. So we have a capacitor, and that capacitor is initially charged with 10 volts. Then at t equals to zero, we close the switch. So what we what what should we do here? What we want to do? We want to find the expression of the output voltage or the voltage across the capacitor. So let's draw the circuit. Or I mean, we can we can find the circuit. Let's let's present this problem in order to solve it. We need to write it in terms of a capacitor equals the value five micro. And the Tethner resistance seen by that capacitor. So you may ask yourself now, so how to find the Tethner resistance? And I believe at this stage we we know we know multiple approaches of finding Tethner resistance. Uh, in this case, uh, the probably the easiest one is to apply a test source. So let's apply a test current source. Seven I delta and I delta is twenty. It's the current passing the twenty kilo. So the easiest approach here is to apply the node voltage method. We have one node equation. So we have I of T is entering the node. Everything else is uh, 
is actually leaving the node, so I'll write it this way. So VT divided by 10, okay, minus 7i delta plus VT divided by Okay, no, no. Minus IT plus VT divided by 10K minus 7 I delta plus VT divided by 20K. So this is the first equation. The second equation, I need to find an equation that relates the uh, the dependent source to the node voltage. And clearly, I delta is actually Vt divided by 20k, so I can easily substitute. So that's allowing me to do the following substitution. So if we if I do the calculation, I will end up with the terminal resistance equals to negative 5 kilo. Well, I'm seeing a negative terminal resistance. So let's see what, what impact does, does that have in, in my response. Okay, so let's apply KCL. So I'm applying KCL here. C dv naught by dt minus uh, v naught divided by 5k equals to zero. So if I set the differential equation, I will get uh, minus 40 v naught equals to zero. So the solution to this differential equation is ten. So let's see what we have. So in order to solve it, you need to actually um, assume the solution is something like this. If T, C of A, T of 40 T. So A is found by substitution. Uh, v of zero should be equal to A, and in this case should be 10. Okay, let's see what happens here. The voltage at T equals to, the, the voltage will keep increasing without any, without any limit. And this is not, not a practical, not, not a physical thing. And in this case, in reality, the capacitor uh, will will break when its terminal voltage reaches 150 volt. What happens is the following. You have, uh, you keep increasing the voltage across the capacitor, so the capacitance is constant. This is the voltage, Q divided by C. The capacitance constant, so you increase the charges. If you increase the charges, you increase the electric field. The, what between the electric field and between the place of the capacitor here, yeah, you will have insulator V. And that's why there's no current passing through. Then if you keep if you keep applying electric field, if you keep applying electric field, what happens is that the insulator will break and 
uh, it will start connecting a uh, current. So it will become a conductor. So this is this is what happens here. So it asks us the capacitor will 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 break, will, will be a short circuit when the voltage reaches uh, 150 volt. How many milliseconds before the capacitor uh, short circuits? So in this case, we need to equate. If we solve for it, we'll end up with 67.7. So this behavior, if you close the switch, you will notice that everything will be stable for only 67 milliseconds. After that, the capacitor will break, will be short circuit. It will not work anymore. OK, uh, that's it for today. Uh, thank you very much. If you have any questions, please ask. Yes, sir. Victor, um, isn't the current the same in the circuit where we have 10 volts and minus 5 kilo ohm? Why did we apply KCL? Are the currents in opposite directions? Or? Uh, no, uh, we apply KCL because we want a differential equation that relates the current to the voltage. Uh -huh. And the differential equation will always have the form of A e to the power AT. Uh, and this, and, and if you have, if you set it like this, yes, if you have dx uh, uh, by dt. Uh, minus, let me call it, plus A, X equals to zero, then the solution will be uh, X, A, negative T, but here A in our case is negative 40, so that's why we have positive. Okay, thank you. Ahmed? Doctor, if we have an independent source, it's known. The current source, the right side. Can I get the VT? Then I'll do it with 20 kilo ohm. I'll get the I delta. Yeah, I mean, the thing is like, you can assume the value of I of T equals to one, for example. Then whatever uh, value of B of T will be R sub n. Uh -huh. Then I can uh, find the I, I delta from that. No, you don't need I delta here. Why, why do you need I delta? What I did was this, a substitute because I know I delta is here. I know I delta is V T divided by 20. Oh, thanks. Okay. Any other question, Shiva? Uh, okay, uh, we'll see you inshallah next time.